Hi everybody, this is Simona from Vector Twist, and in this video tutorial I would like to show you how you can create a 3D letter type in Adobe Illustrator. You can see the one we are going to create right here on the screen. And we are going to create it with the help of the 3D tools. So let me hide this here and let me show you how we can do this. First here on the artboard, let's create a rectangle. We have to make sure that we are on the right layer. And then I'm just going to create a long rectangle. It doesn't matter what color you give it right now. And after that we want to actually select it and we want to create a symbol out of it. So in order to do that, we're going to open up the symbols panel. Let me drag it out here. Then with the rectangle selected, we're going to drag it into the panel. When you see the plus sign, you let go. And then here in the pop-up, you'll get the symbol options panel. So let's call this stripe. Whatever export type you choose, it doesn't really matter. And if you want to choose it later on, just keep dynamic symbols checked for now. And then we click OK. Now you can see here, we have our symbol called stripe. After that, we're going to create a new rectangle again in approximately the same size. After that, with the rectangle selected, we're going to Effect, 3D, Revolve. In the pop-up, the first two values here we're going to set to 0 degrees, and the last to 90 degrees. Then we want to turn on the preview, and then we already want to go and open up the map art. Now in the map art, we want to go to surface number 3. And then from the drop-down, we want to select the symbol that we've created called stripe. Then in the bottom right corner here, turn on invisible geometry. And then in the window here, we want to actually alter the stripe. We want to rotate it. So I'm going to grab it and I want to rotate it approximately 45 degrees. As you can see here, we already have some stuff happening. All we have to do now is increase the length of our stripe a little bit and then rotate it some more. Watch what happens on the screen. Now imagine these are the parts of your W that you need. So depending on how wide or how squished your W is going to be, will depend on how far you rotate the stripe here for the map art. Here, let me just show you again. If I don't rotate it too much, it's going to get spread apart. So if I rotate it a little bit more, it's going to get a little tighter. So right now this actually looks like a V and not a W. And I'm pretty happy with it. So we can click OK. Then again, we are coming back to the 3D Revolve Options window, and we're going to click OK here too. Now, once we've done that, since the 3D effects are live effects, we actually have to expand the appearance. So we're going to do this by going to Object, Expand Appearance. Now, what happened is that we actually have clipping paths. So we have to undo those. So with everything still selected here, we're going to Object, Clipping Mask, Release. So I'm going to select it and I'm going to go to ungroup and then ungroup again. And then I can select it and then delete it. And now what we have here is two parts. First, we have to delete some other parts here. We have one path here that we need to delete. Now let me actually add some gradients to these two shapes so we can distinguish them from each other better. So I'm going to open up my swatches panel here and I've already created swatches and tons of gradients. So first, Let's just select both shapes and let's set it to a black and white gradient so we can see better what's happening. As you can see now, these two shapes will build up our W. So now I'm going to actually select the first shape, duplicate it and have it meet with the other one. I might have to tweak things a little bit and move it around. But as you can see, we're building up now our W. After that, I'm going to select the second shape, duplicate it and have it meet with the shape that we've just duplicated. And now you can see we created a band that creates our W. If this W is too wide for you, you can just select it and with the free transform tool, squish it together a little bit. Now we want to actually create two more duplicates. First, we need to create a duplicate for the front part here of the W. So I'm selecting this shape. I create a duplicate and have it meet with the other one. Then the same I'm going to do for the end here. I select this shape, duplicate it and have it in front of this shape that I've just highlighted. I want to cut those two shapes. And there's an easy way to do this quickly. So let's switch the stroke into a black and the fill for none. Then we're going to create a straight line and we select the line in those two shapes. And then we're going to open up our pathfinder 
and there we're going to select divide. Now the bottom parts we can select and delete and then this part we're going to send to the back and of course we have to ungroup it and this part we're going to send to the front. And as you can see now we have our ledger W. And now it's really time to actually give it some color. So first I'm going to select my shape here on the left, bring the fill to the front and then as you can see here in my palette I've created already tons of gradients and solid colors. What kind of color you're going to give your letter is really up to you. I wanted to go with something funky. You could maybe apply metal gradients, have it all in silver or create a gold letter out of it. I've decided I'm going to go with a color. First, I'm going to select this shape and then set the fill to white. After that, I'm going to create a copy to the front and then give it a gradient fill. And in the gradient panel, I want to set the radius to minus 90. Now this step I'm going to repeat with all the other shapes. So again, I select this shape, fill it with white, make a copy to the front, and now I'm going to fill it, and now I'm going to fill it with another gradient. So I'm going to choose a yellow gradient. Again, I have to pay attention to my degrees here, minus 90 degrees. Then I'm going to repeat the step, fill it with white, copy it to the front and then another gradient. Select it, fill it with white, copy it to the front and again another gradient. Now again I have to set the gradient radius to minus 90 and then I have to do the same thing to the last parts here. I'm going to set it to white, copy it to the front and then I'm going to set it to a gradient. So again I have to switch it to either 90 or minus 90. It really depends and I might actually have to drag it out a little bit, just so it fits with my other shape behind. And last but not least, I'm going to do this to the last shape here on the left as well. And that's pretty much it. This is how you can create in Illustrator with the 3D tools a 3D looking letter. And then I'm going to create a background. And now you can see our letter. Of course, I could select all the shapes and I can alter it and make it a little bit squished. This is really up to you. Now the only thing that is really left to do is create some shadows. Now let me show you the original one again. As you can see here, I just showed you how to create all the shapes and add the gradient to it. And then I've just created some shapes that I filled with black and then I added feather to it. And as you can see here in the appearance panel, if I double click it, I get the feather pop up and I set it to like 29 pixels. And that if I send it to the back, is creating a shadow for me. So I've created several shapes to create the shadows as if our letter is actually made out of a band with 3D depths and dimensions and some color. And this is it. I hope you enjoyed this small tutorial and please don't forget to subscribe to Vector Twist channel here. See you soon.